The race for the Premier League title is heating up as Arsenal approach their biggest test of the season. Pep Guardiola's robot in Manchester away. With the Gunners faltering, Mikel Arteta has a massive dilemma. So let's find out what is happening with William Saliba, as well as David Ornstein revealing our new midfield targets. We'll break down who is the solution to Arsenal's problem and how is Mikel Arteta going to line up in our title decider at the Etihad. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bows14, welcome back to your boys channel. It has been a testing few days as Ulster fans as we enter the most crucial period of a title race. As per, smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. Let's start off with Mikel Arteta's dilemma. Arsenal vs Southampton at the Emirates Stadium was crazy. 3-3 at the end, Arsenal stole a point, but the game was far from simple and it was full of so many events. According to the XG though, Arsenal deserved the win. With an XG3 on the dots to Southampton's 1.39. The stats are all in Arsenal's favour. With 74% of the ball, 98 final third entries, and a 5.9 expected threat created. According to the field tilt, Arsenal were dominant with 84%. But stats don't always tell you the entire story. Now, going forwards, Gabriel Jesus had a very hit and miss game. As always, the effort was there trying to make things happen. But in the crucial moments where he got the chances, he was indecisive once again and missed some sitters. Prime example 68th minute. Southampton have just made it 3-1. Jesus gets a golden chance, but was unable to take the chance. Now, there is no denying that Jesus has elevated the Arsenal attack, but he is also the highest player in the Premier League in terms of underperformance of expected goals. Despite an XG of 13, he's only scored 9 goals. With a 14% conversion rate, that is half of Erling Haaland. And even though in the Premier League title race we have a chance to go again, if that was let's just say in a Champions League, that's where for Arsenal it may be even more costly. We also have to talk about Fabio Vieira. With Granit Xhaka ruled out via illness, Vieira was given a prime opportunity which he failed to take. With one key pass all game and two shots off targets, Vieira was very passive and struggled to impose himself. And being inside the stadium I was hearing a lot of Arsenal fans groaning and moaning. I'm not giving up on Fabio Vieira, I definitely see his long term potential, but as things stand he does not have the physicality to replace to Granit Xhaka. I want to give Reese Nelson his flowers. He's been Mikel Arteta's go-to super sub and in this game here coming off of Gabriel Martinelli, playing a vital part in the Arsenal equaliser and nearly even scoring the winner. What I love so much about Nelson is every time he enters the field, he tries to make an impact, but he's also got the desire to track back. Think about this game right towards the end, Southampton were nearly in. With a pacey Suleimana chasing the ball, look at the desire of Reese Nelson, the strength to win the ball back and to ensure that at least Arsenal will get a point. The Arsenal attack here isn't the problem. Two goals against Liverpool pulled two goals against West Ham and three goals against Southampton. We are the second highest goal scorers in the Premier League. The real concern is the defence. From Ramsdale's awful mistake to how easy it was for Phil Walker to go past Gabriel and Rob Holding to score the second. This graphic sums it up. In the first 18 games of the season, Arsenal only conceded 14 goals. In the last 14, Arsenal have already conceded 20. Less of the shots are being saved, we are facing more XG. And since the introduction of Rob Holding, there has been a clear drop off. Arsenal have gone from second in the league in terms of XG against to 19 since Holding came into the team. And he may not make any obvious errors, but with him in the team, Arsenal are not as compact. Our defensive line is deeper. And here's a prime example for the second Southampton goal. Just before the ball reaches Alcaraz, look at Rob Holding and look at Gabriel. The rest of the Arsenal defenders are all high up, but for whatever reason, Rob Holding's dropped deeper. An example of where Arsenal are so imperious at sustaining pressure right now Arsenal don't have that same ability to pin teams in and we are clearly missing a certain William Saliba. And here he was on the Arsenal bench after Southampton made it 3 goals to 1. As you can see he's not very impressed. With him in the team Arsenal had a 77% win rate, 2.4 points per game and 0.9 goals conceded. Without him it's dropped to 40%, 1.8 points per match and 1.8 goals conceded. Saliba is a top, top defender. He's won the ball back the most times in a defensive third of any player in the league. Dribbled pass on the fewest occasions, has the second highest tackle success rate, and third in terms of overall possession one. When you take out a Rolls Royce like William Saliba and replace him with a Holding, he was always going to struggle. Arsenal have an elite system, but that also requires elite players, and that's where Rob Holding was always going to struggle. You could say that Arsenal have played themselves short by not signing another centre back in January alongside Kivior, but let's not forget that alongside Saliba, in the same game we also lost Takehiro Tomiyasu. Two important first team defensive injuries have cost Arsenal massively. Even in terms of on the ball, Holding is not the same player. As you can 
can see here, he attempts less passes, completes less passes, has a lower passing accuracy, makes less passes into the opposition half and less into the final third. But it's not just about Rob Holding because the other Arsenal defenders also need to hold accountability. The likes of Alexander Zinchenko and even Aaron Ramsdale in goal could definitely have done better in the past few games. And this all falls back to Arsenal's defensive form at home, where in the Premier League Arsenal have only kept three clean sheets all season. In 16 games, only bottom place of Hampton have kept fewer. As things stand, the defence is not working and Mikel Arteta needs to make a change. But who is going to be the solution? Now, I've heard a few fans call for young Rua Waters, the Arsenal Academy player that can play as right back. And as you can see here, he was in recent Arsenal first team training. There's no denying that Mikel Arteta is a massive fan of his player. In fact, he's one of the only Arsenal youngsters that he took onto international duties. But at only 18 years of age and having never made a first team Arsenal appearance, you can't just throw him straight into the Premier League, especially in the title race. It would be incredibly naive. Arsenal, of course, also have Jakub Kivior, and this guy is 23 years of age. He's played at the World Cup and he's got a bit more experience. But playing two left footed centre backs in Gabriel and Kivior is not something that I think Mikel Arteta is going to do. There's a reason why you have the left footed Gabriel and the right footed Saliba. And that's what Mikel Arteta has always gone for. I think the realistic solution here is going to be Mikel Arteta moving Ben White back in the centre back. And that's where you might have Thomas Partey. A role that he's played before for Atletico Madrid. And even Mikel Arteta tried it against Crystal Palace. He's clearly aware of his ability to play there. We all know about Mikel Arteta's elite tactical mind and now it's time to utilise it. But what do you guys believe is the right solution? And what would be your back four against Man City? But on the topic of fullbacks, you've also got Ainsley Maitland-Niles. And he has confirmed that he's set to leave Arsenal as a free agent in the summer. As he says, it's been a great journey, but it has come to an end now. Southampton is a great club to be at, and if they were to make an offer, I'll be more than happy to stay. Ainsley made and nows what could have been, and especially as Arsenal need a right back right now, he could have been so useful. He was meant to be the original inverted fullback, and midfielder able to play as a right back. And under Mikel Arteta, he did have some promising moments, but he was unable to find consistency. Never seemed to enjoy playing as a fullback, and now his Arsenal career is coming to an end. But from outgoings to incomings, let's talk about a midfield signing. An Arsenal alone into the Premier League and as revealed by Charles Watt and confirmed by David Ornstein, Arsenal have serious interest in signing Chelsea's Mason Mount. Mason Mount is entering the final year of his Chelsea contract, he's not going to renew. He's looking set to leave and there's plenty of competition. The likes of Liverpool, Manchester United and Arsenal have interest and I am not surprised when Mikel Arteta would want him. On the left hand side in the area of Granit Xhaka, Fabio Vieira has struggled, Smith Rowe can't stay fit. It's an area where Mason Mount could play and thrive. And even though this year he's been out of form the year before, let's not forget, over 20 goals and assists in the Premier League. For a lot of people, this may be an unpopular signing, but Arsenal are not afraid to go against the grain. Go back to the signings of Aaron Ramsdale and Ben White. So many people doubted, were they too expensive? And now they are two important parts of the Arsenal first team. What Mason Mount needs in his career is a designated role, and Arsenal Mikel Arteta could give him an elite system to maximise his strengths. But Arsenal also have other Premier League targets, and one of course is Brighton's Moses Caicedo, who was the man of the match for Brighton in their FA Cup semi-final against Man United. Even though Brighton lost as Solly March sent his penalty into April, Caicedo was once again very impressive. A 7.2 rating with 83 touches, 53 accurate passes, 3 out of 3 long balls, 4 out of 4 dribbles, and 7 out of 11 ground doors. Playing as a number 6, his ability to evade pressure and break into the final third was very impressive. And that's why he could be so important for Mikel Arteta. He is not just a number 6, but has the ability to carry the ball into the final third and maybe play as a number 8. And the player himself has once again been speaking about Arsenal. And on his failed move in January, he says, It was really close. I suffered a lot. And when asked on if he wants to see Arsenal win the Premier League, he says, Of course, I hope they do it. Let's see. There's no denying that Caicedo is a fan of Arsenal. Arsenal, but he's also a fan of a club in Spain. And as he says, I like Real Madrid. It's always been my dream to play for Real Madrid. I am doing things very well now, so why not join Real Madrid one day and win the Champions League? It's my biggest dream. Real Madrid to Arsenal, this guy is flirting left, right and centre, and ultimately, he wants to leave this summer. And according to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal are still interested in Moses Caicedo, but they are not alone. There are more English clubs keeping an eye on the situation. I'm not aware of concrete talks of Real Madrid at this stage. It's his dream, but not something negotiated now. The idea of Caicedo in the Arsenal team is definitely scary. But getting Caicedo out of Brighton is going to be difficult. And according to James Pierce, the feeling is that it would be a lot harder to get Moses Caicedo out of Brighton than it would be to sign Alexis McAllister and probably involve a higher fee too. Brighton won't want to lose two midfielders in the same window, but they seem to prefer Caicedo and maybe that's a sign for Arsenal for who they should be targeting. Now let's talk about Man City versus Arsenal. 
if there was ever a time to say it, this game is truly gargantuan. Arsenal's biggest game of the season by a mile, a potential title decider, and it's all at the Etihad, a ground where Arsenal have not won since 2014-15, where Olivier Giroud and Santi Gazzola helped Arsenal win 2-0, so long ago that nearly half of that team is now retired. And the last time that we even scored there was 2019, Laurent Koscielny. Here's how the form looks going into it. Man City have won three out of the last four games. They haven't lost since February, winning 13 out of the last 16. You then compare that to Arsenal, who are also unbeaten in the league since February, but they have drawn the last three games in a row. And our last defeat was all the way back against Man City. Can Arsenal get their revenge? Oh boy, is it going to be difficult. We are up against an absolute machine who have a robot up front in Erling Haaland. 32 goals this season and 48 in all competitions. Behind him, you've also got Kevin De Bruyne supplying him with 15 assists. Man City are the most dominant team in the league, averaging 65% of possession. But these guys don't keep as many clean sheets, keeping 10 all season. That is two less than Arsenal. And even in terms of XG created, Arsenal are slightly ahead of Man City. The stats suggest it's an even battle, but at the Etihad, of course, it's going to be even more difficult. Only one team has beaten Man City there all season, and that was Brentford. The size of the task is truly gargantuan, but what about the team news? Well, in terms of Man City, they do have an, a fully fit squad, but it looks like they could be missing key defender Nathan Ake, who went off against Bayern Munich with a hamstring injury and was unavailable in the game in the FA Cup. Now, that would be massive, especially in terms of Arsenal, but Kyle Saka on the right-hand side, if there's no Ake, it's going to be Saka versus Laporte. But then you also have Arsenal. Well, in terms of Granit Xhaka, out of the game against Southampton via illness, it looks like he's set to return, and he should take the place of Fabio Vieira but the real question is William Saliba. David Ornstein has dropped a dagger that Arsenal will be without William Saliba for the game against Man City, as the back injury is not showing sufficient progress, and he's also likely to miss the midweek game against Chelsea. Increasing concern his season could be over, but it's not confirmed. Saliba's back injury is worse than initially expected, and according to Sammy Mockbell, Saliba has serious structural damage in his back, and Arsenal fear playing him again this season will cause long-term injury. Now, Ornstein does say that Arsenal continue to closely monitor Saliba as they try to reintegrate him for a critical final month for the season, but it seems like this injury is very serious and that's where Arsenal have to prioritise the health of the player. As close as we are this season, we can't risk the player's safety, and the last thing that we want is repercussions going into next season. So without William Saliba, how is Mikel Arteta going to line up? Well, here's a potential lineup with Ramsdow on goal and a back four of Zinchenko, Gabriel, Ben White and Thomas Partey, a midfield three of Jorginho, Xhaka and Odegaard, and a front three of Gabriel Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus and Bakayo Saka. Ultimately, I do believe Mikel Arteta needs to try something different because holding in this game for me is going to struggle. And the fact that you saw Thomas Partey against Southampton, sometimes dropping off as a centre-back, maybe that's an indication that Mikel Arteta does see Thomas Partey playing there in this season. There's also been some shouts of Arsenal turning to a back three, maybe Jakob Kivio or Kirantini. Having dropped points against Southampton and West Ham, this game has become must win. So comment down below what do you believe Mikel Arteta needs to do? Should he play a back five or should he go toe to toe? But what about going forwards? You've got Gabriel Jesus, but you've also got Leandro Trossard. And it's worth noting that since Trossard has left the Arsenal starting lineup, Arsenal have not won a single game. Recently, he was given the player of the month for March. As great as Gabriel Jesus is, there's an argument that in a game like this, you might need the efficiency of Leandro Trossard. Trossard has a history of scoring in big games, especially against Man City. And if it's not about the goal scoring, he's also got the creativity to help out Saka and Martinelli. Who is Mikel Arteta going to go for? Tactically, Mikel Arteta in this game needs to be on point. And what we've seen in the two games against Man City this season is Arsenal love to go man to man. And even though Arsenal lost both of those games, they were both very competitive. But in both of those games, especially at the Emirates, Arsenal made key errors. Big games like this are decided on fine margins. And that's where Arsenal need to show they've learned. Do the basic fundamentals correctly, avoid making any mistakes, and we then have the platform to get the ball into the final third and let our attackers do their magic. This will be Arsenal's toughest game of the season, and many fans seem to have given up. But as hard as it is to hear at times, Arsenal still have control over the destiny. We've used up our insurance policy of a point gap. But if we can do the spectacular and somehow win at the Etihad, think about the confidence it'd give us. As Gary Neville has previously said, Sir Alex Ferguson used to say, if you had to win one game to win the league, would you take it? And the answer was always yes. Arsenal win at the Etihad and they will win the league. If you were handed this opportunity at the start of the season, you'd snap someone's hand off to have the opportunity every single year. And in the past, Arsenal have done things in three. The last time we dropped points, it was three games in a row. Everton, Brentford and Man City. 
We've now had those three games, and if that pattern was to continue, this could be our bounce back game. I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. So, my friends, comment down below your thoughts. And do you think Arsenal can do the spectacular and win at the Etihad? Now, let's move on to the other Arsenal news today. And starting off with the Arsenal star boys at wide, Gabriel Martinelli and Bukayo Saka. Even when Arsenal are struggling, these guys find a way to shine. Both were on the score sheet against Southampton, and these guys are racking up the numbers. Saka has 13 goals, 11 assists. Martinelli has 15 goals and 5 assists and Odegaard has 12 goals and 7 and in terms of those two wide forwards specifically Saka and Martinelli are the first two teammates aged 21 and under to record 20 plus goal involvement in a single Premier League season since Cristiano Ronaldo and Wayne Rooney these guys are definitely trying their best and they're giving us just about a chance and here's how the title race looks Arsenal 75 points with 32 games played and a 43 plus goal difference Man City are 5 points behind with 30 games played and a 50 plus goal difference Arsenal definitely have the harder games, but Man City also have a few tricky ones, with away games against Everton, Brentford and even Brighton. This is what you call a proper title race and in terms of Arsenal, if they're able to record even a point against City, they will mathematically confirm the return to the Champions League. Whether we win the league or not, this year has been a success for Arsenal in terms of a step in the right direction. But that is the video there and there, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy in all of his social media, Yes, then the links are down below in the description but that was all of today's latest Arsenal news and all focus turns to our most gargantuan biggest game of the season it's Man City at the Etihad it ain't gonna be easy but winning a title was never meant to be easy and I'll see you next time keep believing hope for the best in a bit